Chapter 9 Loops In programming terms, a typical loop has the following things. A loop counter initialization, a body, a modification to the loop counter, and a condition to determine when to stop. These things may be more obvious in some looping constructs than in others, and may not take place in the same order, but behind the scenes, this is generally what's going on. In a while loop, the condition is checked first, and the body is only executed if the condition was true. After the body is executed, the entire loop repeats from the start by checking the condition again. In most cases, the body of the loop will contain code that changes the condition to false, thus ending the looping cycle. If the condition remained true indefinitely, the loop would continue to run endlessly. The important thing to remember when using while loops is that depending on the condition, the body may never be executed at all. Do while loops work almost the same way, except that the condition is checked after the body is executed. This means that the body will always be executed at least once, unlike the while loop. Whether the condition is checked before or after the body of the loop is always an important consideration when figuring out the initial values and the condition logic. For loops are a handy tool for programmers. The syntax takes some of the work off of the programmer's shoulders in initializing, testing, and changing the loop counter. In the brackets beside the for statement are three expressions. The first is usually used as an initialization of the loop counter. This is always executed at least once before everything else. The next part is a condition that's checked before each loop iteration. Just like in a while loop, this means that the body of the loop won't be executed if the condition evaluates to false the first time. Finally, the third expression is executed after the body of the loop and before the second expression is checked. This is most often used to change the value of the loop counter for the next iteration of the loop. For each loops are designed to work only with arrays and make doing something with each element of an array, also called iterating, a very simple task. In the brackets beside the for each keyword, an array is supplied, then the as keyword, followed by a variable that will hold each element of the array in turn. The body of the loop can use this variable to read the element. A slight variation on the for each loop exists for arrays where we need to work with both the key and the value of an element. In this construct, instead of having just one variable that takes the value of each array element, we supply two variables that hold both the key and the value of an associative array element. Let's have another look at example 5 where we learned about arrays. In this example, we grouped five different conversions into an array, but we still had to explicitly initialize, calculate, and output each array element. What if we needed a table with more than five conversions? What if there were 100, or even 1,000? For more than a few elements, we'd need to do a lot of typing. This is where loops come in. Example 8 shows us just how this works. In about the same amount of code as before, we're now initializing the array with 100 sequential values and their conversions. That's the power of loops. Whenever you find that you're writing the same thing over and over again, chances are it's a good place to use a loop. Let's have a closer look at the changes. From quantities and to quantities are first initialized to empty arrays. This is so that these variables are initialized before we try to write to the elements within. Here, we're using a single do while loop to initialize both the from quantities and to quantities arrays. As we mentioned before, this kind of loop is often used with a loop counter. We've set up this example to use the variable quantity as a loop counter, with first quantity and last quantity defining the range of values that quantity will hold throughout the execution of the loop. We've also included the variable quantity interval to make it simple to change the distance between each of the quantities we're converting from. Going through the loop here, we can see that quantity is first assigned with the value of first quantity, or 1. The body of the loop is then executed, and using quantity as the key for each of the two arrays, 
we assign quantity as the value we're converting from. Then, the converted value is calculated and assigned to the from quantity array. As the last statement in the loop body, we increment the quantity by the quantity interval. The loop termination condition is then tested, and since quantity now contains the value 2, the condition remains true. This causes execution of the program to return to the start of the loop and do it all over again. In the last iteration of the loop, quantity will be assigned with the value of 100. When the termination condition is checked at the end of the loop body, it's true, and the program continues with the next line after the loop. There's another loop in this program within the output section. This is the code that outputs a row for every quantity in the array. If we were dealing with only one array, a for each loop here would have been more appropriate. But since we're dealing with two, the for loop is a better choice. Here, we can see the three expressions in a for loop. The loop counter, quantity, is initialized to the first quantity. Then, the program checks whether quantity is less than or equal to the last quantity. Since it isn't, everything within the loop body, including the HTML tags, is displayed and executed. Just as in the first loop, quantity is used as the key for each array. So each value that was initialized and calculated in the first loop is now output in a nicely formatted HTML table. Looking at example 8 in our browser, we see that for each value in inches, there's a corresponding equivalent value in centimeters. This table contains 100 values, ranging from 1 through 100. Looping provides the ability for your script to do the same repetitive task over and over again. Because we can use variables inside of loops, similar tasks can be performed on a number of different variables, values, or elements of an array. When designing a loop for your program, always think about the conditions for the first iteration of the loop, and how the loop counter will be changed in the loop structure or body, and how the loop will be terminated. Considering these things will ensure that your loops are well thought out and you'll avoid spending costly time trying to figure out why your program isn't working.